Ladies and gentlemen, joining me here now is the driver of the number seven Spire Motorsports Chevrolet, Corey LaJoy, here at the LA Clash. Corey, I appreciate you taking the time, man. I know you've been a busy guy the past couple of days, giving out pace car rides. You did your live podcast uh, yesterday. Uh, so how does it feel being back here uh, for the second running here at, in LA? Man, it's uh, such a cool town, market to, to stick NASCAR in. Obviously, we've been here for a long time out in Fontana, but right where we're in the heart of, of downtown LA, right here in the LA Memorial Coliseum. So uh, to knock out a, a really cool podcast, had a lot of fun with Alvin Kamara jumping on as a guest, as well as Matt Farah uh, it, over at race service. And it's just business as usual, man. We're back into it. We're working hard. We've been doing a lot of simulation uh, work over the off season and try to find some speed with our with our Chevy Camaro. So I'm ready to get back to work and, and apply all the things we learned last year into uh, a little bit of short track race this weekend. Absolutely, yeah, definitely a lot to look forward to, and we'll get into that. Um, but I want to stick here with the clash and kind of expectations for this race in its sophomore season. Um, you have now a second year here at the track, second year with the next-gen car, so what are your expectations as far as intensity? Do you expect the uh, intensity to be amped up, guys willing to be more aggressive, um, kind of pushing the needle a little bit? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I thought we saw a fairly tame race. We only saw a couple bent fenders and bent feelings last year. Um, I think we're going to see a little bit a little bit more, uh, a little bit more beating and banging, because uh, now the cars are a little more rugged. People know what the weak points are and have strength in those areas, and um, it's going to be it's going to be a, an event for sure. You're going to see more guys run to each other, spin people out. Uh, I, I think just because we also noticed that uh, those those paybacks from this race didn't carry over to the 500 or to the West Coast Swing. It's just drivers were pretty quick to forget and didn't retaliate after that. So we're going to, I think we're going to uh, smash into each other and do whatever we got to take to make the show and then also to get a good finish. Yeah, 100%. Uh, now to kind of look ahead into uh, 2023, like you had mentioned before, there's been a lot of work going into this operation, uh, into the off season and your expectations. Uh, one of the things that I really kind of stood out to me when I was listening to your show is this, this fact that, you know, you're not hoping to win, but now expecting to win uh, in this season. So Kind of talk about that off-season preparation and how you sort of set that expectation uh, with a lot of highs from last year and now that you guys have grown and putting in a lot of the work, now hopefully going to see it pay off in this year. Yeah, we had a, we had a, several highs, but we had a lot of lows last year uh, with mechanical failures or you know, mistakes behind the wheel for three, or four, for three or four incidents. So if we can clean those up, make our car reliable, and make the driver reliable, make, make sure I'm locked in, do 500 laps or however long the race is, and not make mistakes, we generally finish pretty good. Uh, we finish, anytime we don't have any issues, man, we're generally a top 20 team, which is freaking hard to do. So if we can just string together, you know, a, a year like that, I think Justin Haley had a super, uh, a super year that was, that was underrated and nobody really talked about it. Michael McDowell had a great season as well, but, you know, I think that if we hit on all eight cylinders and don't have any mechanical failures, I think that we could have a year like that, you know, hit the ground running, and it all starts here. Uh, you want to come in here, have some confidence. Like I said to guys this weekend at the shop was, if you go in hoping to win, it's never going to happen, right? It's, you, you just don't back your way into it. You don't get lucky. Uh, you put yourself in position, and you race with a with an intention to find yourself competing for wins. And also, you walk into the garage expecting to have just as much of a chance as anybody else, as opposed to just settling to where we are in the garage and taking our, our licks and, and liking it. That's not, that's not what we're going to be doing. Uh, we know what we're capable of when we do, uh, when we do execute. And uh, I, I expect us to execute on a weekly basis and be more consistent and, and myself as well to continue to get better, to continue to learn and just like hone my skills and continue to get better in, in some areas that I know I'm weak. Uh, with a lot of the tools that I'm being afforded with, with GM now, with more simulator time, uh, more driver driver simulate or just more driver information, I'm going to break that down and try to get a little bit better. But um, it's going to be a great year nonetheless. Talk a little bit about Ty Dillon. He joins the team full time in 2023, having this teammate now. Talk about your relationship with him and kind of have you been able to build that in the off season uh, to build on that consistency going into the year. No, I think on paper, Ty and I have very similar careers. We've been bouncing around a little bit out of necessity and. Um, you know, I think that the ties had some opportunities that um, similar to Bob has I, where 
either you don't appreciate them when they're there or they kind of get taken away with, with the wrong personnel or whatever the case may be. So him and I have a similar path and story. Um, you know, we both had different outlooks on how the sport is and, and how our driving styles are in terms of confidence. But, um, you know, I think Ty seems to uh, fit in well here. He's got a great attitude. He's ready to, to plug in and, and make some stuff happen. Um, and it's going to be good to have a consistent voice uh, that we can continue to, to work on our baseline setups because teammate communication is as important with this car as it is of any time just because limited practice um, and you know all, all the factors that come along with that where you need to be precise with, with your information and feedback and, and Ty brings a, a veteran uh, outlook into uh, what our team's mission is going forward. I do want to ask you, we are in L.A., Grammys are this weekend. Got to know what's on your playlist pre-race. What gets you in the zone? I know you're a big Marty Robbins guy. Had you on the car last year in Darlington. Is it all Marty Robbins or you got some variety on there? No, what do you like? No, Marty Robbins is a little old school, man. That's uh, You're not going to be driving a car very fast if you got Marty Robbins playing on the TV or on the radio. But um, I've been on a bit of a hardy kick. I've been on a, uh, you know, Morgan Wallen's awesome. I've been on a Lecrae kick. Uh, man, I kind of I kind of bounce all over. I like some Machine Gun Kelly on occasion. It just depends. I like some Bob Seger. So I can go I can go slow or I can speed it up. It just depends what kind of mood I'm in if I'm uh, ready to hit it. Awesome, dude. Well, look, appreciate the time. Good luck today and uh, wish you all the best here in 2023. Thanks, man. This is Blaine Perkins, driver of the number nine Raceline Wheels CR7 Motorsports Chevy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those two videos beside me. Visit frontstretch.com for more racing content.